Hello, the, I'm um, the founder and the evangelist of Project Harbor. I'm the cello contributor. I also am the co-author of a blockchain book. Now I'm working on cloud computing, AI, and blockchain in research. And now Li Tong. I actually have introduced myself as um, at the first session. My name is Li Tong. I'm from IBM, senior software engineer. My work is uh, mainly focusing on the cloud container and blockchain technology development and the deployment. I'm uh, really uh, greatly engaged in the application programs and the application deployment. This is uh, something I'm very interested in. I'm the uh, cello committer. Thank you, Li Tong. Now we start with um, the presentation. There are several parts. The first part it was um, what was is a cello, what are the key features, the roadmap and the architecture, and uh, the how to contribute and the QA. Then, what is a cello? Cello is um, for the aim of uh, helping. Uh, with, with um, the operation and management of blockchain. It's um, the operating system of blockchain. We know the operating system is for the management of hardware and software resources so that uh, we can really have um, the uh, good uh, use of it. So the uh, Cello is a blockchain operating system for the um, deployment and the management challenges. If you have deployed a blockchain, you know it's a distributed system, so it's very complicated. If uh, there is something wrong with the configuration, then it doesn't work. So it requires a systematic management solution. That is a Cello. Uh, cello solution for cello. We uh, allow users to uh, focus on their application development instead of um, the uh, daily infrastructure management. We think the blockchain or the uh, fabric blockchain technologies are the core. So cello help with um, the operation and the management. Cello can uh, help us with uh, the following areas. Firstly, it can uh, quickly provision the managed blockchain networks with a dashboard. It really have a good and user-friendly dashboard. And uh, Cello can support various computation resources. For example, you can see Docker, Docker Swan, Kubernetes, vSphere, and other resources. Also, it can monitor the chain health status automatically, the operation status, and the log analysis. So, for the uh, on blockchain technology, we hope that Cello can resolve these pain points. In 2017, January, it was accepted as a hyperledger top project. It has some sub projects. Um, Cello is one of the sub projects. Now, in the major contributors are from IBM, Oracle, VMware, H3C, and CloudSoft, and uh, so on. 
Now we have uh, more than 600 uh, commits. The language is Python, Golang, and JavaScript. We also take advantage of um, the, the frameworks, including Ansible, Kubernetes, and Helm charts to, um, to uh, help the uh, deployment of Cello and also the Ansible agent later on. I will give you more details about uh, the Cello's key features. Firstly, I'll show you this um, the chart of um, the conceptual conceptual topology. In this slide, you see we have uh, numerous companies. Companies. Each company is independent organization. In within the company, they can deploy different uh, uh, fabric have have a ledger fabric network. The yellow part refers a network, and um, the network is um, the hyperledger fabric network. The pink is another hyperledger fabric network, and also the smaller one in white. So the Hypercella can help with the management of um, the uh, yellow part, but also the distributed uh, deployment have uh, have a larger fabric network. So the distributed management uh, can uh, compose an uh, integrated um, network. This is um, the deployment structure. These are the major features. Cello has uh, five major features. It help help. Um, create the nodes with um, the uh, physical resources. After creating the blockchain nodes, it can join a network. That means each organization has um, the, the uh, nodes to join the network one by one to uh, form the structure of um, the uh, alliance. And then the users can use the blockchain applications and uh, the uh, Fabric API. Also, it can provide um, health check to help users uh, to monitor the system operation. And also, if it's necessary, we can delete some uh, nodes. This is um, the uh, life cycle management of um, the uh, blockchain. Now we uh, have uh, had um, the uh, infrastructure, including the five major uh, parts, Docker Swan, and uh, also the uh, servers and the Veeam vSphere, Sphere, and the Kubernetes, that is um, the uh, Kubercom the theme, and it has become a dominating container-based scheduling platform, and also Ansible, which is a uh, um, Automation tool, and also there will be more for expansion. Uh, we hope we can support the following features, including monitoring and analysis of data, for example, chain status and the system utilization, the network latency, the log messages, and chain code, operation analysis. All this information can be displayed. This is um, the uh, Cello um, uh, feature about uh, distributed and uh, dedicated deployment. The first one, oh, we can uh, firstly take a look at um, the uh, management of a local blockchain network. On the left side, you can see the infrastructure, the operators, that is admin of um, the uh, platform, which can uh, invoke the API to create a worker. But then the worker, the workers, as I said before, they can be uh, the uh, either of um, the five infrastructure platforms, as I said before. After creating the resources, then each organization user can create different peers and different nodes, including order and the CA and the peers, and so on. With the API, they can create them. And then for the worker pool, they can have, um, they have a ledger fabric nodes. With um, the API, we can call we can call the uh, the created 
the created a hyperledger uh, cases. Uh, on the left side, it's on the pathway. On the right side, you can see this is, um, for example, I'm representing another company's hyperledger fabric network. With um, the con configuration, it can connect it into a whole network. We have um, both the dedicated um, deployment and also distributed deployment. So the two deployment models can be connected to form an overall or one single network. This is also something we are now working on. Next, I would like to uh, talk about uh, the architecture and um, the uh, design. The architecture and design, here you can see there are four layers. The first layer is the user dashboard, the user's ad ad administration interface, the UI uh, can or can have um, the uh, direct interface. The second is a REST for AP API, different REST call to uh, realize the UI connection and the functions. It's a very common. The third layer is um, the core, the orchestration implementation, the orchestration engine for the uh, deployment and the logging and the events. It's um, the recording of uh, the events and logging and also monitoring and, uh, and analytics. These are the core functions at the layer of core. And then we have an agent layer to uh, help the uh, heterogeneous infrastructures deployment of um, the fabric. Here you can see the five of um, the major agents. Now we go into the details about the dashboard layer. It's a rule-based access control. Different users can come into the portal or UI, UI to see um, differently, um, two differently views. The first one is um, the operator. The view of operator is for the management of infrastructure, including the cloud resources, the physical, and the, VIM, the uh, virtual machines. This is um, the uh, role of the operator, the platform level administration, administrator, and also user role, the organization companies have um, the uh, blockchain and they manage the uh, nodes uh, deployment and the user creation and so on. They belong to the organization's uh, work. That is um, the view of a user role. These are the two major roles in this dashboard. After logging in, you can see different views. The second layer is an API layer. API layer, uh, some of the functions have completed, but others have not. Um, now the user management, including register and login and create users and organization management and resource management and blockchain lifecycle management. The, it's a create, update, and search. Uh, these are the basic operations and also common oper operations. Basically, you see the management functions is done by the API layer. Now for the core layer, apart from API interface, the core layer includes the orchestration of the blockchain network and the log event and the resource and the agent management and also the collection the analysis, analysis of the data and the collection of information. This is um, the core layer, some of the functions are already being ready. Then the agent layer is pluggable, it's um, open. Now we have uh, five, but in the future we can support even more platforms. For the uh, cello, each type of resource cluster is uh, called a worker. The operator provides the uh, worker to organization the mean to create uh, peers and different uh, nodes to have a usable network. So you can use the standard API, standard Docker Swarm API, and standard vSphere API, and Kubernetes API to uh, manage the uh, base layer in structure. That is a brief introduction for the cello overall structure. Now for this program most project, uh, some of all the uh, 
overall framework has been a taken shape, and we have um, a roadmap for the future. Some of the functions have been ready. My colleague Li Tong will give you an introduction of the Ansible agent of Cello, which can help us with um, the uh, automated deployment of Cello. Thank you, Henry. So um, I, I mentioned Cello a couple of times. Uh, so, you know, Cello is the product that allow you to deploy Fabric Network and then manage it. So, um, as I said quite a few times, there's so many different ways you can do things. Uh, Cello Ansible Agent is just one way, right? If you like it, you can you can try it. If you don't, you can participate in this um, open source community and to make it so the way it works that you like. So you can always try that. Um, so next, I'm gonna show you uh, how actually uh, you can use Ansible agent to stand up Fabric Network very, very quickly. So, um, so how, how actually you, you prepare uh, to set up the Fabric Network? Uh, if you wanna use Ansible agent, which is part of the Trello, actually it's really, really easy. But you really need a Fabric, you really need a Kubernetes cluster first. Right? That's where all the containers and pods will run. So you need a, a Kubernetes cluster. Then you will need a, a YAML file like this. Okay. Uh, well, actually, this is just the directory shows uh, those files you need. Okay. Uh, I'm going to show you what each of this means. The first one is CA DAL13. That actually is a certificate file. And if you are, if I have a Kubernetes cluster and I need like a username password, how do I actually uh, talk to the Kubernetes cluster? So this is one of the certificate. And the kubeconfig file and shows, you know, where it's the endpoint and all that kind of stuff, right? So these two files coming from your Kubernetes cluster, right? We didn't invent any of those. So it just happens that the IBM uh, provided Kubernetes cluster give you these two files if you want to use the uh, Kube control uh, program to access your Kubernetes cluster. Because we're going to deploy Fabric Network onto the Kubernetes cluster, we will need this, right? This is a given. This is not something we created. This is something provided by your cloud provider. Think of those as a username and password. So the next thing you need is actually the network's uh, spec file. This is YAML file. I'm going to show you later how that file actually looks like. Uh, then you're going to need another file called the resource.yaml because when you actually deploy any application onto Kubernetes, you want to make sure that uh, you uh, give the enough resources. For example, CPU and the memory, how much CP how many cores of CPU you want to give to the pod and how many memories you want to give it to those uh, pod or containers. So resource actually is a file uh, to you know, allow you to, to limit those things. So you just need this, then you simply run, you simply run one command, okay? You simply run this one command. Then after about 10 minutes, your Fabric Network will be running, okay? So, actually, I, I wanted to do the live demo, um, but right before this session, I, I run it. It takes about 10 minutes. So from here, um, take about 10 minutes to stand up a Fabric Network. So after I tried that, I didn't delete the Fabric Network. So I left it running. So I wouldn't do that because it take 10 minutes. Nobody want to wait that long, right? So the Kubernetes cluster actually is in the United States. Okay, that's where I work. So my cluster is there in Dallas. That's why it shows Dallas. Um, so I'm going to show you after this one command is complete successfully, what's going to happen in your Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so I'm going to quit the presentation and show you my command line and what actually is running in your Kubernetes cluster.
a little bit difficult. Uh, Line mouse is not working right. Oh, it doesn't. It's really weird. The mouse doesn't move to the right. I don't know. See? I thought I did. Ah. See, I cannot move my mouse to the right. Yeah, see, it doesn't work. This is really weird. It never happened. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, it's a I'm sorry that we have some technical glitch, so wait for a second. Ah. Okay. Now it's. Okay. Actually, what I want to show you, this is this is the the. the the command I run. You can see this is the exact same command as showed on the screen, right? So I just did that uh, like half hour ago. So this shows you actually uh, it took about 10 minutes to get the Fabric Network set up, right? So now I'm going to show you what actually is happening in your in in the cluster. So everybody knows Kube, uh, Kubernetes. Probably already tried. Cuddle file, right? Command. So this actually, if I do get pods, did this actually all the pods are running after that command complete successfully? So you have those pods which each one present either a peer or order node, okay? And all other um, uh, pods that uh, help the the peer actually run. This is a pods, and you can also say. You can also see the services. Uh, yeah. Services. Okay. So these are services that actually use the node port to expose your peer or older endpoint to outside the world, right? So um, we also actually use um, the PVC, right? This is the um, uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, a volume, right? Persistent volume claim. Right? So we through all just one command I showed you, right? We create a lot of things. So this is just example. You know what's in the fabric, uh, what's created in inside your Kubernetes cluster. And if you want to do this differently, right? You use other means. You probably will have similar things in your Kubernetes cluster. All right. So, what else? What else I want to show? Um, oh, okay. I want to show you the the actual file that I use to produce this uh, uh, fabric network. So here, uh, let me just do that. Okay. Earlier, I showed you there are a few files you need to run that command. Okay, this is one of the file. So in this file, there are quite a few things actually significant. Uh, at the top, you actually can specify what kind of uh, database you want to use for your peer database. If you know Fabric, that you know that you can use GoLevelDB or CouchDB for your peer database. And in this case, I simply use GoLevelDB. Then you can say, hey, TS on or off and what kind of consensus type you want to use. Here in this case, I, I'm using ETCD Raft. This is the new consensus 
algorithm that we provided in the latest uh, Fabric release. Of course, you can use Kafka if you want to, right? Then we give some uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, resource um, uh, allocation, right? Now you can also specify so many different order or peer parameters, right? Anyone who actually deploy Fabric Network knows the parameter for peer or order, the list is really long, right? So what actually is really, really important actually is this section that says network, Fabric Network. This defines here, this defines how many older nodes or peer nodes actually you have. I don't know if you guys can see it. Make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so here you have orders, then you have peers, right? So these, these things actually you see when I did When I did get put, you see those names like a, like a peer one or zero, right? Peer one or zero, right? You can see this actually according to the network spec file, you actually produce all those components in your Kubernetes cluster. This is the network actually running, is ready for you to deploy chain code and uh, install chain code and create channels, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so because of the time, uh, now you see this actually working. Everything is, is good. And now say you already finished what you're trying to do and, and you, you don't want this fabric network anymore. Of course, in your production, you wouldn't do that, right? But because this is a demo, I just want to show you how quickly you can actually get rid of everything you just did. So what you need to do now actually is just to um, one other thing, just very similar to to the um, to the fabric to to the command that you use set up fabric network. Now this one, okay, this one, this one command. You just need to run this. See, this is one command, very similar to the command that we run. The only difference is that there's just one word different, right? The first command says apply. This, this command to destroy everything says destroy, right? That's it. So you run this, it will actually remove everything the first command that set up in your uh, Kubernetes cluster, okay? So with that, I'm gonna switch back to the uh, Okay. Okay, so actually here we, we talked about the fabric network, how you define it. You feed this YAML file actually to the Ansible agent, then your fabric network will be stand up for you. Right? This takes about 10, 10 minutes from China to actually access the cluster in the United States. Um, Actually, if I did this in in US, it would take less time. Um, we talk about those things, and the next actually we talk about right. We showed you what actually created in your Kubernetes cluster. Then I showed you the one command actually get rid rid of everything that you just did. Okay, so. Now, if some people say, hey, a cello is really heavy, it takes you know, a lot of resources to do things, actually that's not true, right? Uh, this one command to stand up your fabric network, you feed the network spec file any way you want, right? Whether it's one organization or it's like 20 organizations, you can do that easily. Okay, with that, I think uh, we probably used 10 minutes now let's Henry talk about the roadmap. Thanks, Tom, for the demo. So let's back to the roadmap. 
Starting from 2017, we've experienced several different versions, and we want to release the uh, version 1.0 in the third quarter. And there are different modes for deployment. One is dedicated, and the other is distributed. So if you want to join us, Projects, you are more than welcome. If you want to join us, you can join the Hyperledger repo, and then you can receive the task, and then generate the commands, run the code, and create a new branch named with the task ID, and create a batch, batch sets, and uh, git to commit, and uh, git to review. After passing the review, then you can uh, send the patch set link to it. Some Chinese users are already using the program. You are interested in it, please be part of us. Each week, we have a meeting at um, uh, evening. That is um, the uh, the uh, process on this uh, PowerPoint you can see. Uh, also, we have the uh, slides on the website of um, the Kibercom. I will skip the details. We have uh, several contributors, including Hai Tao, Hai Hua, and Tong, and Jia Hao. They are the key contributors. These are some of um, the uh, useful channels and the lists. A lot of messages um, there, and also the Rocket Chat and the Jira task board. Each week, each um, Friday night, we have a, a community meeting to talk about the development directions. So you are welcome to uh, joining us. If you have any suggestion, please uh, do. That. Okay, now we have uh, several minutes for Q&A. If you have any question, you can raise a question. We have uh, some maintainers and the users are here. Okay, then it's a really clear presentation, but you can come to us offline. Thank you.